Good morning, Jericho. I have a few announcements to bring to your attention. The Mount Ona Baptist Church invites you to the installation service of the newly elected pastor, Jasper Chamberlain Jr., on Sunday, April 25, 2021. And staying within the COVID-19 guidelines, this program will take place on the external grounds of Mount Ona. A dinner reception will begin at 3 o'clock p.m., followed by the service at 4 o'clock p.m. The, the entire event will take place outside to adequately, adequately social distance by way of provided seating or in your vehicle, as the event will be broadcasted through a local FM station. Dr. Glenda Glover, President of Tennessee State University, shared that black males are needed at Mahari Medical College. There is a program between TSU and Mahari Medical College where the student will go to TSU for three years and then to the medical college and finish to become an MD or DDS in seven years. If you know any black males who are in high school, who are high school seniors that want to become a medical doctor, have a 28 on the ACT and a 3.5 GPA, there is a possible free ride for them at TSU. Please contact Deacon Wright for more information. The reopening committee will be sponsoring vaccination education night on Monday, March the 29th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m., church members will have the opportunity to ask experts questions regarding COVID-19 vaccination. Join us this Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. for our virtual Bible study via Zoom with Reverend Delano Medley. A link will be provided prior for those who have signed up to receive JV alerts. Continue to keep the family of Trustee Melvin Anderson in your prayers during their bereavement. The funeral services will be private. The funeral service will be live streamed via Zoom this afternoon at 12.30 p.m. The Zoom link is available on the H.W. Dabney Funeral Home website. Continue to keep Brother Ivory Hunter and family lifted in prayer for the loss of his sister, Ms. Amelia Hunter. Funeral arrangements are pending. This will conclude the announcements for today, Sunday, March 21st. You will now be blessed with the music Election, followed by a message from our guest preacher, Reverend Delano Medley. Thank you for your time and attention, Jerusalem. Let's continue to keep each other lifted in prayer, continue to stay safe, and may each of you have a blessed and encouraging week. Thank you. Yes!
word of this wonderful opportunity to come back and share uh, with you all. And again, this being our season, knowing this resurrection season, when we celebrate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I thought it would be fitting by the leadership of the Holy Spirit uh, to lead you uh, this morning in the past of scripture found in the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 14, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14. As you turn to it or uh, place in your favor uh, the various apps uh, for you all to get there. Amen. This is a joyous occasion and a joyous season that we just celebrated and remember uh, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are turning to where I often send messages out to uh, family, friends, and congregation uh, word for the week. And uh, one of the messages that I sent out uh, this week was uh, in 1863, where the Emancipation Proclamation was uh, extended by President uh, Abraham Lincoln on the option of uh, slavery. Under the South, specifically, state of uh, Texas, uh, they uh, didn't make it publicly known. And so, uh, uh, where we get Juneteenth uh, to celebrate that day, that was the day that was set aside for everyone across the nation in Europe of the abolition of slavery. Well, I want to just share with you. Jesus Christ, he signed the Emancipation Proclamation over 2,000 years ago, where he went to the cross for all of us. And now, because of that, we are free. Amen. 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 So, I hope you found in Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 9, for your hearing. Amen. Verses, excuse me, for your reading. Verses 1 through 9, Mark chapter 14. Amen. Amen. But I would like, uh, if I could, to start at verse number 4. It says, There were some who said to themselves, indignantly, Why was the organ wasted like that? Amen. That's enough right there. Amen. If I could uh, attach a, a text to this um, to this group of verses here, Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 9, I to leave a thought with you all. When worship is treated like a waste. Amen. When worship is treated like a waste. Amen. I ask for your prayers. Fill me with your prayers as I led by the Holy Spirit. For a lot of us, this conversation that we have uh, through day in and day out, there's one word that specifically sits out uh, to us, and that word is extravagant. For a lot of us, um, that's defined um, in a negative conversation by saying if things are too extravagant, then we are spending too much money, was spending too much time, or simply it is considered wasteful. With that being said, a lot of us, we believe that any time that we're spending money foolishly, then it is considered a waste. Not only is it a waste, but we also believe that it is unreasonably priced high. If something is not unreasonably priced high, then all the cost, then we attach a certain um, a certain body language or character with that, and we become or find ourselves being very flamboyant. If we are not very flamboyant with our character, then that negative condensation says that we have simply gone overboard with what we are doing. In our text today, we find this woman, uh, and here it is uh, defined as just a woman, but when you turn it over into the Gospel of John, John identifies this woman as Mary, the sister of Lazarus and the sister of Martha. And this woman right here, she finds out that Jesus is in town, and while he's 
You see, he is there. She finds out that not only is he there to pay him a visit, but he's also there reclining and having dinner. While they're having dinner, this woman, she comes in by John's expression as Martha. She comes, excuse me, by Mary. She comes in. While she comes in, she pays close attention to Jesus. She's only focused on Jesus. While she's focused on Jesus, she walks right up to him while all that was in the room were men. She breaks this alabaster box open and there is a nice fragrance that is seeping from the box. This fragrance, this oil, this nard is then poured on Jesus' head. This is poured on Jesus' head. The disciples are looking with a frown on their faces. Some would say they are beside themselves, as my grandma would say. And they are looking at her very strangely. And because what they wanted to know was, was that this ointment that they had been familiar with, this scent that they had been familiar with, they wanted to know why was it that they were that she would take all of that expensive oil and simply pour it on Jesus' head. While they are uh, talking bad about this woman, while they are making her, trying to make her feel bad, she doesn't pay any attention to anyone else, but she uh, simply pours the oil on Jesus' head. And while they're in conversation, Jesus hears the conversation and turns around and asks them, why are troubling this woman in, in one uh, common text. But if I could just tell you this way, uh, the Lord's way, uh, Jesus simply looked at them and said, why are you all hating on her? Amen, somebody. Amen. Because this woman right here has done a great thing. Now, if I, before I get into that the story right there, but before I part right around here in the parking lot of Jerusalem and give you some things that this text is trying to teach us. The first thing that I want to tell you all is, is this, uh, that's, that I personally have a problem with the amount of money that professional basketball players, professional football players, and professional baseball players make. Amen, somebody. I, I, I think it's a problem that Floyd Mayweather can make all of that money simply boxing in a ring. Amen. But can I tell you all the reason why I feel like I feel that way? I feel that way simply because I don't have the money to that they are making. Amen, somebody. And so for a lot of us, the reason why we are in the positions that we are in, the reason why we think the way that we think, the reason why we are focused on somebody else's money is simply because we don't have what they have. Amen, somebody. Which brings us to our text today because this text right here is defining to us uh, passing by uh, the moments when Jesus Christ is about to be given up and uh, offered up as a sacrifice for sinners in this world. And the text right here is coming because he's paying his last dose, his man, his last attention. He's focused on the individuals here because Jesus Christ knows that he's about to give himself up as a sacrifice. And he is getting ready to go to the cross 
worship unto God, unto Jesus Christ, while they were looking at it as a waste. And I come out here to Jerusalem to let you know this morning that there is nothing that is too expensive when it comes to worshiping God. There is nothing that is too expensive when it comes to showing and identifying who Jesus Christ is in our lives. And so because of this situation right here, when she shows up, the first thing that I want to bring to your attention while we are parking here on the parking lot this morning is that worship is expensive. Amen. Somebody, y'all have to get this right here because worship is very expensive. Worship takes and requires everything that we have to give to him who gave us everything but didn't have to in his own free will. And so worship is expensive. Check this out right here. While this woman has showed up here at uh, here at, uh, at Simon's house, while she is there, she makes her presence very relevant because she wanted to show him how important that he was to her. Check this out right here. While Mary shows up, first of all, in order for worship to be expensive, you have to be willing to break some barriers that you've never broken before. Can I roll with this text and teach you historically what this text is telling us? Check out Mary right here. Mary, first of all, what she has is, is a, is a alabaster box, or in some languages or translations, it is a very shiny, uh, molded rock type of uh, formality that has oil in it. Uh, the oil came from India, but the uh, but the rock on the back of the box came from Egypt. Check that out right there. That you have very expensive oil in a very expensive container that came from Egypt. Okay, because of that, this woman right here has now realized that this right here is very expensive. And you just don't go waste expensive uh, and waste expensive oil on just anybody or anything. Not only that, but if you want to break some barriers, you got to be able to break some generational curses as well. Check it out right here. That when she knocks on the door and walks in, that she is the only woman that is in the room. Okay, back up, preacher, and let me explain, explain that to me. Let me see, can I explain this to you? That in that time and that formality, that women just didn't show up and lean around in a room with a bunch of men. That, that, that uh, because of that, because of their culture, it just doesn't happen. But let me see, can I help y'all out? Uh, uh, when you look at it from another translation, she is described as the type of individual, as, as her person when she shows up. Not only does she show up uh, in a room full of men, but she also shows up and her face is not covered. Not only does she show up in a, in a room with a bunch of men, not only does she show up uh, where her face is not covered, but uh, where her face is not covered, but she also shows up and her hair is down. Now y'all gotta get this right here because in that culture and in that time right there, that if a woman's hair was down, she was defined as a loose woman. But I wanted to just part right here for a second and ask y'all a question. Is your worship so expensive unto God that you sometimes just have to cut all of the formalities? Let me see, can I help y'all out? This ain't time. This is one of those segments when it's not time for the deacon to come out with the Lord Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is not the time where we put on our Sunday go to school meeting best clothes on. This is not the time where the old ladies used to have the matching pocketbook, the matching shoes, the matching dress, and the matching head. But this right here is a time where I just got to get to Jesus Christ. So basically, what I'm asking you is, is this. Have you ever just put everything else aside and had one of your let your hair down moments where you knew that worshiping God was more important than all of the other cliches. This woman right here, she knew and she realized that her worship was expensive. She shows up in the she shows up in the room. Ah, uh, she's the only woman there. She shows up. She let the men know, hey, I got something very important that I have to tell him right here. This is something very important that I have to do because my worship is very expensive. 
expensive. Right? She's looking at it and she pours the oil down on him. Second point that I wanted to bring out to you all this morning in this drive up service is simply this that not only is worship, not only is worship expensive, but you also have to realize that worship is expressive. I, I like that. I like that. Because, check this out right here. Let me see, can I help y'all out? That you didn't come here this morning and you're not on the drive up service this morning, or uh, drive in parking lot this morning for service. You are here because you are ready to worship God. And worship must be expressive. Amen, somebody. Amen. Okay, let me see. Can I help y'all out for a second? Why is it that worship must be expressive? Because with worship, there comes praise. Now, let me see. Can I help y'all out for a second? There are some times in our lives where when we are simply meditating on the Lord, that we have to go back and be reminded over and over again of just how good God is to us. Amen, somebody. And so every once in a while, it calls for us to meditate on the Lord. It calls for us to dig in deep in the word of, of, of God. It calls for us being reminded of our past sins and, and what Jesus Christ did to get us out of our sins. Y'all, if y'all haven't realized it yet, let me see can I help y'all out. I couldn't die for myself and I couldn't die for you and you couldn't die for yourself and you can't die for your children and you can't die for your husband and you can't die for your wife. There is somebody who went to the cross and died for our sins. And because he died for our sins, we have a sovereign responsibility, amen, to become saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we have the sovereign responsibility to let him know that we are his. And we have the sovereign responsibility to let other folk know how he is alive and well in our lives. And we have the sovereign responsibility to tell others about him so that we can expand the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I tell you that if you're going to do all of that, then it requires that your worship must be expressive. Amen. Somebody, I have to let somebody know what he did for me. I have to let somebody know that he died on the cross for me. I have to let somebody know that when I was in the muck and the mire and clay and wild, the devil was on my trail, that he protected me from the wars of this world. I have to let somebody know that he is expressive unto me. This woman right here, when she looks at me, she says, hey, my worship is expressive because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour the oil on him. The reason why also this is expressive is because of the action that takes place after she finishes uh, pouring the oil. After that, okay, so let me see if I can help y'all out. Historical uh, reference here. Uh, that any time that you have guests in a house during this time period right here, if, if these guests right here were, as, as, uh, were guests that, uh, that were, were of royalty, then we realize and understand, amen, that because of that, then you didn't just do certain things. Amen, somebody. If a, if a person of royalty came to that house and they began to drink out of that glass because they of royalty, after they had finished drinking, then they would sit down and break the glass so that lets us know that no one else could use it. Well, this woman's expressiveness unto Jesus Christ was so real that this is what she said, that I have an expensive box that came from Egypt, and I have an expensive amount of oil that has come from India, and what I want to let you all know is, is that I got to express unto him what he has done for me. Okay, let me see, can I help y'all out and back up? I told y'all, John said that this was Mary, uh, the sister of Martha, and the sister of Lazarus, okay? All right, so what you saying, preacher? Well, this is one of those occasions where Mary decides to fall to the feet of Jesus Christ again. All right, let me see if I can help y'all out. The first time that she came into contact with Jesus Christ was when Jesus showed up at their house to have 
dinner. While they were there having dinner, and Martha was in the kitchen grabbing the pots and pans and getting food ready, that Mary was at the feet of Jesus Christ in the living room uh, uh, trying to learn of him. And if you remember the story, Martha came in and asked Jesus, said, can you just bid this woman to come into the kitchen and help me? And this girl, and Jesus turns and tells uh, Martha, said, Martha, she is doing a great thing because she wants to learn of me, okay? So this was the same Mary that when Jesus showed up four days later after Lazarus had been dead, uh, that Martha, first of all, goes out there and tells Jesus Christ these indicative words. Had you been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. Uh, but what she didn't know was, was that Jesus had already told the disciples that this is not a, a, a proclamation of death. Uh, this is a proclamation of number one, Lazarus being asleep. And number two, I got to show them what God is all about. Uh, and so again, Mary shows up at the feet of Jesus Christ. Uh, and she tells Jesus the exact same words. And last, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. Uh, uh, but Jesus, after he finished weeping and crying, uh, turns to Mary and tells Mary this. Simply go to the rock, put your hands on the rock, and remove the stone where he is laying at. Uh, okay, what is that saying, uh, preacher? Well, this is what it's saying. Uh, that God tells us oftentimes uh, that he will show us uh, his sovereign will. Uh, and then there are some times uh, that his secret will uh, will be revealed to us at any given time. So, okay, so preacher, what are you telling me? All right. So this is what I am saying. Uh, if your worship wants to be expressive, then sometimes it requires for you to do what he uh, sovereignly tells you to do so that if you're obedient to the word when he tells you, you know how to be obedient to his will, to the secrets of his will, when he ain't ready to show them to you yet. Amen, somebody. And so you got to understand that Mary right here, she had an expensive, expressive worship with God, with Jesus Christ prior to him even showing up at, at our Simon the leper's house. Uh, so preacher, sum it up to me. What are you saying? Well, I came here this Sunday morning on this driving parking lot service to simply tell you that if you don't have an expressive worship, an expensive worship of God, that means that you're not in the worship and service in private so that you know how to do it in public. Amen, somebody. So simply say it this way. If you can come to the church house and pray unto God, then you ought to have it in your private note. If you can sing unto God in the church house, then your voice ought to be ten times louder while you're in uh, the shower singing unto God. If you can come to the worship house and tell somebody about your testimony and what the Lord has done for you in the church house, then you ought to be able to express your worship in the bread department of food line when somebody come up to you and say, can you pray for me? Don't pray for them when you get home, but your expressive worship says that we're going to pray right now over your body. Pray right now over your children. This woman right here, she didn't have an expensive worship, but she had an expressive worship as well. One more thing here, and I'm going all about your business. Got to have an expensive worship. Got to have an expressive worship. But the last thing you have to do is, is that you have to realize that your worship will expand you. Amen. I like that right there. That your worship will exp expand you. Okay? So, after Jesus Christ turns around, looks at the disciples and tells the disciples, why are you worried this woman with this foolishness that this woman has done a great thing? Ah, Mary realized that Jesus was about to give himself up. That this was one of those last times that we never would not have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ in uh, Jesus turns around and tells this woman that, uh, tells the group that this right here, this act right here that she has completed uh, is so well uh, that it is going to be recorded for 
Get up! 
took up a lot of your time this morning. Quit passing the herd. For that individual, all eyes closed, all heads bowed. Real fast. If you're that individual that have not gone through the formality of accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, also known as a moment to become saved, we're fasting the herd. If this word right here today, this morning, has touched you in a place that you want to know what your purpose is in God. I share it with you all in the text that your purpose for being created is simply to gain a relationship with him. After gaining a relationship and become saved, that you show someone else how they can become saved. And then thirdly, your purpose in doing that is to expand the kingdom of God. So that's your purpose. Well, a preacher, uh, thank you for the information. But now where do I start? You simply start right here. By opening up your mouth and confessing and saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. Even though I'm a good person, but I'm a sinner. And I need to get involved in, in a relationship with you. Not just any relationship, but in order for us to become in the relationship that God wants us to have, we have to look for an intimate relationship with him. So God, I want to have an intimate relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ. I don't know everything. Don't act like I know everything. But I want to start. And if you mean that within your heart, then guess what? You're saved. And now you have the opportunity to get with some members here in Jerusalem. Leadership staff, the active ministry, uh, the discipleship uh, class. You have an opportunity to get with them and ask them, hey, what are my next moves that I have to make? And congratulations for being accepted to the body of Christ. If you're saved and you're saying, you know what? Hey, this pandemic has really put me in a strong people in a line. And, and, and I know that I was supposed to get closer to you and maybe I didn't do everything right. This message right here is touching me to the point to where I know that I can give you my best worship. And so I want to be able to give that to you. So Lord, I want to do that. I'm inviting you to come in and rearrange some more stuff in my heart and my life so that I can come to, be, to become more mature and become closer in my walk with you. Thank you for doing that. You give us so much. Now, I task you with this. This is your own concern. And I task you to give us someone who you trust, someone who knew you, who made you out by your name. And I task you to give them responsibility to hold you accountable. I don't know. Choose someone who's just going to appease you, go along with everything that you do. But you give someone who will call you right to right and will call you wrong to wrong and will hold you accountable by the word of God. Yeah.